Oh, we are free. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, first peek. Oh, you know what? It doesn't look that bad. Hey guys, man. my name's Seth, and this is my 2006 Mazda Speed 6. That's been hit by a deer. So a couple of weeks ago, I was driving down the road after making some adjustments to my suspension. And once I got done, went for a victory lap and boom, deer jumped a guardrail. I was doing like 45, 50, splat. Unfortunately, did kill the deer on impact or maybe fortunately, poor thing didn't suffer, but the Mazda suffered. So in 2006 and 2007, Mazda made the Mazda Speed 6. This is pretty much just like the regular Mazda 6 from the time, but it's all wheel drive and turbocharged. And they only made a couple of them and they only made it for two years. So this is a baby of mine. When they got hit, I could not let the insurance company total it. The core support slash radiator, um, the support has been broke and you see the hood has been just shoved up, um, bent the fender. Um, windshield is cracked on the other side. We'll see it but I can't release the latch. It's locked in tight. And this part here is all broken shattered. So it would have been totaled and I did not want the insurance company to take it. And I did not want to have a salvage title. So I took to the internet and oh, can you see that or not? No, not really, but the hood is totally pumped up and pushed into the fuse box. And then the windshield, um, the hinges actually shoved into the windshield cracking the windshield so i am going to fix it and it's just way too clean i'm the fifth owner of the car and i'm a big nerd you see the dbz shifter and you know what it, it just needs to be done so what i'm going to do today because the hood latch is popped and the hood won't pop up i have actually already started i broke the bolts free and i got two of them out there was next to no room at all to get in here get to the hinge get to this hinge and unbolt it but there was enough room to get a 12 in here and slowly work it for about 10 15 minutes and i can get that one off so i'm going to pop the hood off today and hopefully pop the hood off i'm gonna get these two last bolts out and see if i can get the hood to position in a way where it can fall off its own latch and if not i'm gonna get some bolt cutters and snip the latch after unbolt those and get the hood off and see just how bad it really is because i'm kind of already in it i've already bought a new color match hood uh color match bumper um, and got some headlights for it so i do want to make this thing look as if um, it was not damaged um, because ultimately it's not too bad there's a big cavity behind this so when the deer hit uh, because the as an aftermarket intake on it the factory air box is gone so this 20 some year old plastic and headlight had to take the weight of this deer and it passed right over the main bumper support. So because it passed over the bumper support, I really believe that it's fine. It didn't drive weird at all, other than it did start to overheat, but I knew coolant was leaking. And I think we're gonna be okay. I think the blow off valve uh, probably got a little smushed, but maybe not, I won't know until the hood comes off. So we're gonna get the hood out and then we do have to make some changes. Like uh, this piece here is actually part of the main structure of the body. And that's what holds the other half of that core support. So I want to get that line back up so the new core support can go in. And that way the headlight will set nice and even because the fender didn't really bump or uh, bulge or do anything. Uh, the lines are still pretty much the way they were. Um, these ends here flared out, but that seems to be pretty common with just how the hoods are shaped and the hinges are bent. But it looks like the hinges were weak enough that the hinge itself actually just, yeah, it just twisted. So I think based on these mounting bolts down, bolt holes down here just being pulled over a smidge, that it's probably gonna line up just fine. And I didn't hit hard enough to like bend the frame or anything. So I believe I'll just unbolt the hood hinges, um, get the hood off, and I had to, find, I had to source some new hinges. I have a hood, but I don't have hinges. So I'm gonna get some hinges and put this all together. And then because like the factory undercoated this, like the gray, like, it does look so different. It looks more like light, light gray, not as metallic-y. I don't feel as bad about the next thing I'm gonna do, which is my friend's gonna come over and we're gonna wrap it. I don't know what color we're gonna do, but I got a couple ideas. 
Um, but hopefully that comes up pretty quickly. My goal is get this together, get it running, um, and get it back on the road um, before winter. Um, as you can see, it's starting to rain. Um, it's just after Thanksgiving. I think it's Sunday after Thanksgiving. So this is going to turn to snow <laughs> pretty quick. But this is her. So I'm going to set this over. I don't know how much of this I'm going to record me actually turning wrenches, but I'll show you basically what I'm going to do. I showed you on this side. I'll show you the tools that I used. I, this is old, and this is the only twisted one I have. So I don't think I got a bunch of cool fancy wrenches. But this is a 12 millimeter ratchet head. I um, mean, it is an X wrench. The X doesn't matter, but there was enough room to slip it in here, get to the bolt heads, break them free. And then between this, this end and my fingers that I could get onto it, managed to get these out. Now the other side is much easier to get to. Um, I'm going to grab a light. Now let's take a look here. Oh, much better, much, much better. Hang on, drop the wrench. Okay, so there are the two bolts. So I'm gonna get up in there and finish taking those two bolt heads out and I can get to them see if I can set this up with the socket on this side. So I'm gonna come in here and take a focus. Maybe it's way too bright. So I'm gonna get these popped off and then once I get these on off of here, oh I'm gonna have to use a I'm gonna have to use a wrench on that one. Uh, okay so this one is about to come out of there. Let's see This hinge is twisted and it's starting to move a little bit as I take one off, so I have to literally get it to the last thread to come out. Got it. So there's one and... Okay, so this plastic piece was pushed out of the way, so uh, it popped back in the spot and now I can get a ratchet on this. I think I got it loose enough that my fingers are going to get this off. Oh, I moved it and it got tight again. Oh, we are free. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, first peek. Oh, you know what? It doesn't look that bad. I mean, the intake's all scrunched up. Let me get a light in here. Oh. The intake is all crumpled, but it doesn't look that bad. Like, I think we're going to be A-OK. -okay. So let me see if I can get this off. All right, so the hood latch is popped. I think. Let me... I'm pop this again. Okay, so it is popped. I'm trying not to get the windshield shattered, but let's try to. I'm sure there's a way this has to move to get this thing to free. Because. I can see the latch. It's right here. So the latch is under some pressure. Oh, you know what? That's not gonna come out. So even if I do 
Ooh, that. Let's see. That. I don't know. That's not gonna release. So let's get some bolt cutters. Let's get some bolt cutters. I think they're in. Okay. Let me see if I can set a light up here. Give me something. I don't know how much of this is. Okay. One's been cut. Now let's get this one on here. Oh, it's on. I don't have much of a grip on this one. <sighs> yeah. All right. Uh, that looks like a safe spot over there. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, camera. Take a look at this. So it straight up just crumpled this whole hood. Wow. I'll say, for taking a you know a couple hundred pound deer, a 45, like you did pretty good. Okay, so now we can get in here and see what's going on. Oh gosh, check that out. Just snap. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna need a new latch. Our latch is totally, totally trash. I'll try to straighten it out, but my experience, something like that, they're garbage. But. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, good. Didn't break any of those clips. And the radiator fan housing is broke, but can't really tell, but I think it might be okay. So what I have to do is, oh good, it's flexible. I was really worried about this line here. And oh, there's my radiator leak. All right, so hopefully the bottom kind of did the same thing and these hoses are reusable, but that top hose <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be okay. Blow off valve looks good. She's mint. Intercooler piping didn't get smashed Power steering still solid Yeah, so you can see on this side. There's a bolt hole here and here and this is super thin like it's this thick and it's um, hollow in the center. So it's pretty thin. And if you take a direct impact here, the only thing that was there was this filter. So the JBR silicone all moved around and squished. My math didn't get damaged. My filter got smushed up. So, you know, James Brown Racing, you, we're gonna have to, nah, who knows? That was, maybe, we're gonna go have a big intake on this. Maybe, maybe we go large, but I was curious if any of the projector stuff is save, salvageable. So let's <laughs> let's see here. Yeah, yeah. So these parts all come out of the headlight. Like there's the housing that's kind of broke, but these headlights, unlike the regular Mazda Six had a servo that I could turn the low beam up and down some. So, um, I would like that to work because it was a neat function and, um, 
just like day to day driving, you, you don't realize how convenient that is to make that make that change. So let's uh, let's set you there for now. And what I'm looking for is did the pigtail survive? And it looks like yes, it did. All right, huge huge win. Um, I don't even know if this pigtail is really sourceable and I didn't have any of the information on the wiring diagrams and that's something I haven't really got into, but knowing that this is okay means I can keep taking the rest of stuff out of here and oh, there, there is what I wanted. That's the ballast to the HID or to, yeah, H these have HIDs, not LEDs. So this is kind of old school. Um, when I had mine, I uh, here, you'll see that. When I had mine back in the day, they just had either halogens, and you had to put this stuff in. But this is a D2R, 35 watt, a 1200 volt, a DC, a 85 volt AC system, and they're pretty bright. They work pretty well. Um, so I don't like this ballast can go bad. And my ballast was good, so like I don't know if that ballast works in that. I don't even know if that ballast is on that one, but this is mounted underneath, so you can see these pretty easily and get to them. It does suck that broke, but like stuff like this, like I don't think you can get these gaskets, and they're a okay. So you know I'm gonna leave that still partially attached to this, so I know what it went to, because I bet there's gonna be a bunch of these little gaskets. So things like that, I'm gonna keep. Um, Cause I don't know, like this thing's got an O-ring on it, at least until the car goes together. And once it goes together, then you know, I'll, I'll toss what, what isn't getting used. But, um, so far, that's how this is going. Yeah, and then there's the, yeah, that got all crushed up. Come here. Yeah, so this is still bolted in back here. And I oh, hope you can see, but I'm pretty proud of this. Um, the tabs on the the bumpers all break off and I rebuilt these out of some aluminum mesh and epoxy maybe you can see the other side a little better yeah so you can kind of get an idea and they work so well that they just pull oh no that one broke that one did break so it still held in still kept it on the car so it did its job but it did break and they all do that even the bumper that I got, um, though all this plastic stuff looks to be in real good shape, that ear's broke. So I take some aluminum uh, mesh and I put some mesh on this and I sand this area up. And then I fill it full of epoxy and redrill the holes and make sure this stuff, like this little guy is broke here, I'll have to re-secure it. And uh, like the thing is broke on this, the grill here, my grill is actually in really good shape. So because that's busted up here, I'm probably gonna replace it with the one coming out of mine. And uh, then we need to get this whole plastic assembly that goes back here. So there's some parts we're missing. Um, but yeah, there's those brand new VCs sitting on there. Ooh, and they were fun. They, man, they, they felt so much better than stock. Um, even coming with just the factory preload springs, they really did a good job. I uh, really did a good job. So pretty stoked about that, especially for off the shelf. like worth the money spend it um i had these junky um race lands on here they're not junky they're super affordable and if you only care about getting that front rod height to match the rear where the rear sags like i guess buy these because there's not another option at the price point like there is they're chinese stuff um there's cheap cheap coilovers that are out there that you could do that with but um, like the rear strut bl blew out uh, on these and then my car was literally just bouncing on the road. It was super unsafe. So um, if you had to, but even lowering springs, like lowering spring guys, like they don't just set perfectly level. Like they don't, I don't know why they don't try harder, but um, I'm really glad I didn't already make some of the upgrades I was going to do, which was one of them was going to be um, go away from this um, uh, CX Racing uh, front mount, which is like the old school eBay front mount of the day, um, but it works. Um, works really well. I replaced some of the clamps, but like even using the factory uh, um, silicone couplers, everybody complains about. Like you can totally get it on. It's fine. 
Um, is it annoying when you put it all together and you probably put the entire front bumper and everything together, fender liners and all, to do your test drive and then it blows the pipe off? Sure, we've all been there. But like, if you have the ability to run it without a headlight or bumper and the fender liners for a little bit, then it does make it a lot easier to do this little test run and see if it's gonna hit. The only issue that I had was that this brake line um, hit directly on this clamp. So I did have to just make a real quick temporary solution um, to solve, which is just some shop towel and some black electrical tape, because I knew that I'm going to move this. Um, I had to get rid of my washer fluid reservoir to put this over here, and I have not relocated it to the other side yet, because my intention was uh, to look for a larger intercooler that gave me uh, inlet and outlet on the same side over here. And then you utilize this big open area and uh, get everything running up and over. Now you have to take battery out, um, but I plan on doing a big intake in here anyway. So I take a big intake in here and I can get rid of this. I believe I can run my intercooler piping up, take the, relocate my battery um, panel box. And I'm, I'm talking like it's gonna be this one. It probably will not be this one. This one's probably gonna go back factory, but the black car out there, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's another one tucked over there. Um, it's much prettier looking, but it's the cloth seats. It's not the GT, but it's got rods and pistons. So, um, really that's the one I want to upgrade and it has a big top mount. So this one might even go back to top mount, but for now it's a front mount. It's going to stay front mount. Um, this looks awesome. I'm going to clean some of this stuff up. I'm going to fish out the rest of the wires and get the headlight off. And then now that I see what it looks like, um, I'm probably going to move to go ahead and get my bumper mounted, um, uh, and bumper not bumper cover like bumper mounted steel bumper support core support bumper support mounted um front lip off and uh because it kind of holds the front bumper up which is probably the main thing that's holding the front bumper up on there now and then i will get these two screws out on the outside i'm gonna go ahead and get the front bumper off um probably save the emblem on the grill but i'll get the front bumper off and once that's off I can move to how bad and what all's damaged on this core support, and I can start to unhook the air conditioning uh, lines, which well, we'll have to have that. My, my AC does work, which a lot of these don't work. I don't know why they stop working other than just age, um, but while it's apart, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take that apart, and then if I can find a good deal on like a new AC condenser or a compressor, even though mine's fine, um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and replace it, um, but I think we'll have this together pretty quickly. I've got a, several of the guys are wanting to come over and help. I just wanted to get into this and get a game plan for what's truly broken and how I can help everybody walk around this because I'm going to need help making the metal go back to where it's supposed to go to. But it definitely didn't hit anything hard enough to like ruin the car. So uh, even though insurance will total this and take this beautiful car off the road, um, we're going to save it and put it back together and getting the hood off was a big step. I've been staring at this again for three weeks. Um, obviously I was a little shaken up from this, but, um, you know, it wasn't anything to stop me or to give me fears that to, to keep me from wanting to work on it or, or drive it. It just startled me and uh, I hurt my wrist a little bit. My wrist was already hurting. Um, but, uh, I must've tensed up right, right, right when it impacted. And uh, I think it went down from like 45, 50 to, uh, right after impact, I think my glance was at like 25. So it shed like 20 mile an hour speed um, in a super short distance. I only had like a six foot um, four wheel skid mark where I just pounced on the brakes. Uh, the moment it was probably about to impact or maybe it already impacted, it's, this is all a blur. Um, so um, I'm just glad the car only got this damage. Um, but again, some of the stuff's not, not easy to secure. Um, I had to drive four hours one way into um hanover pa and uh met with uh an awesome guy named anthony who uh, it's actually his wife uh, she's got the same exact color car but her hood had a little bit of the rust that's starting to form on it and it sucked mine it was mint rust free just need the paint touched up um but same color so i i wanted it the same color so that when i do wrap it uh, which i intend to do um when the hood's popped, um, it doesn't look like I totally disguised a, an accident. Like this is this is an accident that's that's solvable, and I plan on keeping this car. But even if I were to get rid of the car, I'm sure that if I bought this from somebody and they showed me the video, showed me the pictures, explained what they did, uh, I'd feel comfortable with the damage that was presented to me, and uh, and what what I got. But again, this this is this is for me. I actually want several of these. Um, they are somewhat affordable in my area and 
Um, so I, 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 I've been buying a couple of them. So this is my third one um, in 12 months. Again, I started with a silver one just like this, but it was rusty. And after doing some maintenance to it, I sold it for a fair price um, and uh, went and spent some more money and went and bought this one. So, um, yeah. Yep, yeah, there's where we're at. So, guys, thank you so much for checking this out. Um, I've never made videos and stuff like this before, so this is new to me. If you guys can get through my most likely ADHD brain, um, I think it'll be pretty cool to see this thing come back to life and uh, in a short amount of time. I don't think this is gonna gonna be too big of a deal to fix. So, um, thank you for checking it out. Thanks for hanging out with me while I got the bumper or got the hood off, and uh, see you soon.